if the congregation would please rise. Good afternoon. Let's try that again because Sue would like it to be loud and proud. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Much better. Thank you for coming to the service to honor the life and memory of Sue Gray. It's so great to have you here. If you would please rise and turn in our bulletins as we begin with the welcome. So please rise. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our sister Sue, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. All who are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In her baptism, Sue was clothed with Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, she shall be clothed with glory. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is in your hymnals, number 763, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. <laughs>
be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Sue. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until, by your call, we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Congregation, please be seated as we invite Kristen and Kim up to share the memories of their mother. My mother's hands. When I think of my mother, I think of her hands and how they represent so much of her life, her strength, her tolerance, her love, kindness, generosity, zest for life, and of course, caregiving that's very near and dear to my heart. Her hands delivered babies, never twins, but once triplets, she assisted also in the birth of our daughter, Laura. What a thrill for a nurse. Her hands prepared great meals and baked many favorite foods, cereal cookies, banana muffins, and cherry bread. Her hands raised lovely roses, practical vegetables, and kept vintage violets alive. Her hands held ski poles, bike handles, and of course golf clubs, once sinking a hole in one. Her hands held many books over the years as an avid reader, but she especially enjoyed reading to granddaughters Emily and Laura. She was very proud of both of you. Her hands became stiff sore and eventually gnarled from osteoarthritis starting in her 40s. Despite this painful chronic condition, she never complained. She just kept going on as usual. Her hands held sheet music as she sang in the church choir here and at Sweet Adeline's. Her hands knit beautiful afghans, lovely prayer shawls, and special baby blankets. Her hands held and hugged and played with her four great-grandkids. She saw first Jameson at only six hours old and had a chance to hold him. Then came Sebastian, Miranda, and finally Charlotte. She loved all of them. Her hands have also shown love to many animals. I can't list them all but dogs were her favorite, especially poodles. She especially liked to entertain family and friends, and I, looking out at this crowd, I bet half of you were at dinner at mom and dad's, um, and her hands set a lovely table, complete with linens, china, stemware, and of course, cloth napkins. Her meals were fabulous, but before dinner, there were always appetizers, drinks, and a happy hour toast. Her hands swam in the lakes of New England, the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, and her hands loved the sandy beaches of Lake Michigan and the many beaches of Kauai, which, were, which was a favorite vacation spot. Her hands have held a passport that took her across the world many times to Europe, then to Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. She loved traveling and a chance to learn about different countries and different cultures. Her hands have prayed. She served, she's taken and served communion, and we always hold hands at family mealtime prayers. Her hands did much volunteer work, including 20 years of coordinating the Red Cross Community Blood Drive 
with, with my Aunt Joy Sanderson. Her hands provided comfort for those who were ill, especially for those with cancer, as she set up and administered chemotherapy for many years at the St. Peter Clinic. During the tornado of 1998, her hands held my dad and their dog, as I sat under the table during the storm. After they crawled out to safety, they realized that they had lost their home, but they focused on helping their neighbors right away. Her hands have hugged so many family members and friends over the years, showing her love and often giving comfort to you. After their first date in 1956, Dad shook Mom's hand, didn't give her a kiss, I don't think, and then asked, will you see me again? And she squeezed his hand as if to say yes. So for the past 67 years, they've shaken hands each night before falling asleep. I'm glad our family could be there for Mom for the past few difficult weeks to hold her hand and give her comfort. Her hands had seen the best of times, they've seen the worst of times. Blessed be her memory, blessed be her hands. Faith, family, and friends meant everything to our mom. Faith to mom was about living out the gospel by serving others. It's easiest maybe to think of mom's service as a nurse. Her nickname was, after all, Nurse to the World. One strong memory for me is mom, Aunt Joy, and one other nurse taking turns caring for a dear family friend in her home as she died from cancer. They provided comfort care and pain management around the clock in the time before hospice was available. Mom's faith meant caring for others. Family to mom was all about making sure we knew we were each special and loved. When I was in junior high, and trying to run track, mom would walk from the clinic on Sunrise Drive, stand on the side of the road, wave so I'd know she was there, and then walk back to work. I'm fairly certain that she walked faster than I ran. <laughs> when Kim was in high school, she was one of two girls who played on the boys' golf team because there was no girls team. Mom, who taught Kim to golf, was so proud of Kim being a Title IX golfer. When the first Harry Potter book was published, Mom read it before giving it to Emily for Christmas. She'd heard there was some controversy and wanted to be sure it was okay. Please note that Mom never read fantasy ever. <laughs> but for a granddaughter, sure. When Laura was living in North Dakota, mom and dad made the long, very long drive to visit. Not many people did. But mom understood long drives to see beloved family members. We traveled to New England every summer to visit mom's family. It was, for many, many years, the only vacation we took because family meant everything. Friends, well, this one's a bit tricky because once you were a close friend to mom, you were, a, you were basically adopted into the family. Many people have told us that mom was a second mother to them. And it would be weird to talk about mom's friends without naming her very dearest friend, Marlis Johnson. Those two were a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> Amen. Whether rolling in the snow after a sauna, 
or biking down a volcano in Hawaii at dawn, or just sitting on the couch laughing like teenagers, they brought joy to each other's lives. Mom was also blessed with other friends for life. Each of you has your own stories to tell. You've been such a comfort to us during this time. Friendship to mom meant love. Now besides faith, family, and friends, there are two other F words that need to be mentioned. Fierce. You all know that mom was a fierce advocate for justice, equity, and women's rights. And she was a fierce letter writer. Those of us who moved out of Minnesota were gifted with nearly weekly letters from mom and the occasional box of homemade cookies. Mom was also fierce about bad behavior. Whether family or friend, if she thought you were behaving badly, she would simply write and let you know exactly how your actions were impacting others. She was a fierce nurse. When the doctors, Don, Vern, Kurt, Bill, asked if she wanted to learn to administer chemotherapy, she stepped up and offered that amazing care to patients right here in St. Peter long before there were local cancer treatment centers. And then there's our father. Mom loved the rest of us, but she loved our dad more. Her love of our dad was epic. And she didn't just love him for 67 years. She was in love with him. In loving dad with such extravagance, Mom helped us know that love has no bounds. Not even death can take away the love our mother had for all of us. Thank you, ladies. Now I'd like to invite Emily and Laura up to share our first reading from Scripture. A reading from Paul's second letter to Timothy, the fourth chapter. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and at the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Now David Zender will read our second reading from Scripture. The second reading is Revelation chapter 21, verses 3 through 5. And I heard a loud noise from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away, and the one who has seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. The word of God. Thanks be to God. If you would please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. A 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I'm the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. This afternoon, we gather to celebrate the life of Sue Gray. I had the privilege of serving Sue as her pastor for the past two years. When I first met Sue, I realized three things very quickly. First, she had a fierce look of determination about herself that quickly gave way to a warm smile and a firm handshake. Second, she always came into church right next to her husband and partner for 67 years, Bruce. Third, Sue would sit at the end of this second pew, right in front of the pulpit, and almost never miss a Sunday service. This taught me a few things about Sue. I quickly learned that she was a sincere person who meant what she said. Sue also made me feel welcome when I first came here to First Lutheran Church. Over time, as I shared the fact that I had grown up Roman Catholic, Sue said, yeah, I did too. <laughs> Sue grew up with a diverse and interesting background. She went to Sunday school and worship with her mom to the Congregationalist Church, and she went to Mass with her dad at the Roman Catholic Church. Turns out we are both converts to the Lutheran faith. Sue graduated from Leo Minster High School in 1954. Three years later, she graduated from Peter Bent Brigham with a degree in nursing. While she was in nursing school, she met and fell in love with Bruce Gray. They eloped and were married in Jaffrey, New Hampshire on December 14, 1956 she became one of the first married women to receive a degree from Brigham. Way to trailblaze Sue. Together, Sue and Bruce were blessed with two daughters, Kim and Kristen, as well as two granddaughters and four great-grandchildren. Sue spent her career helping others as a registered nurse. Nurses, in my opinion, have a very special vocation in this life. They work extremely hard and care for their patients with skill and compassion. Sue exemplified this level of care and skill in the 37 years she spent working as a nurse. She delivered babies. She also provided hospice care and learned how to administer chemotherapy. Sue was a lifelong learner and a hard worker. She blessed numerous lives over the course of her nursing career. Sue also volunteered with many charities, including Meals on Wheels, Friendly Town, The Blood Mobile, Dollars for Scholars, The Great American Women's Getaway. I want to learn about that more later. <laughs> I'm sure there's some stories there. PEO and the Sweet Adeline Chorus. Sue was an active member here at First Lutheran Church. In addition to being a regular attender at worship, she sang in the church choir. It's a good thing, too. Both Sue and Bruce sang up in the choir loft up there. 
And when they were practicing up in the loft, Sue remarked to Bruce about how dim the lighting was. So she and Bruce decided to do something about that and paid for us to get proper lighting, which you can see up there. So thank you to both Bruce and Sue for that thoughtful and practical gift. Sue was a gift to her family, to her medical patients, to students at Gustavus, and to others. As I mentioned, Sue was a part of a program called Friendly Town. Friendly Town was a program that brought second graders from the south side of Chicago to St. Peter, Minnesota. The idea was to bring those students from the city and let them experience life here. That way they could go outside and get some fresh air, go swimming, have some fun, and experience life in a different environment. One of the students that Kristen and Kim remember was a young lady named Diane McGee. They remember Sue making cookies with Diane in their family's kitchen and how cool that was. It sounds like Sue blessed many people with her time, her skills, and her cookies. Sue set a good example for others to follow. She was loving and caring. She worked hard, and she knew how to have fun, too. Sue was a faithful churchgoer and volunteer. She lived out her faith caring for others. She also modeled what it meant to have a happy marriage. As I said, Sue had a firm handshake. It turns out that handshake has a bit of a history behind it. At the conclusion of their first date, when Bruce asked Sue if she'd like to see him again, in response, in response she shook his hand and squeezed it so hard that she almost broke his hand. That was apparently a yes. For the next 67 years, they were together. And Bruce and Sue shook hands every night before going to sleep. Married couples, do the same. Take another chance to share your love for one another every day, every night, because time goes by very quickly. Sue loved Bruce dearly, and modeled that love for her daughters and her family and friends. Sue will be missed. Blessed may her memory be in our midst. Now, when I thought about how Sue lived her life, I thought about the words the Apostle Paul wrote to a young pastor named Timothy a long, long time ago. Toward the end of his life, Paul wrote this to Timothy. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. That was Sue. That's how she lived her life. She cared for so many others as a nurse, as a wife, as a mother and grandmother, as a great-grandmother, and as a volunteer. She sang in the church choir and came to worship. But more importantly, she took what she learned and was absorbed here, right down to the marrow of her bone, and she took it out into the world to make the world a better place. Christians take note. That's what we're called to do. We're to called to take what we learn here and apply it out there, like Sue did. And, sadly, after a surprisingly quick six weeks with cancer, she finished the race. At least this first leg of her race. Sue is now resting with Jesus as we mourn her death and commit her into God's eternal and merciful care. We also gather together today to be consoled. Today we heard from two biblical passages that illustrate God's care for us. The first part was a portion of the vision God gave to John that we know as the book of Revelation. In that final book of the Bible, we hear comforting words of God's intimate care for us. John heard a voice from heaven, assuring us that God will not leave us to fend for ourselves. No, God will come to stay with us. Revelation chapter 21 says he will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. 
Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. One day the Lord will return in glory. One day Jesus will come back to dwell with us forever. One day Jesus will return and keep his promise to us. And what is that promise? It's the same promise Jesus made to Martha when she lost her brother Lazarus. When Jesus ministered to that family in grief, he said to them, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. As we trust in Jesus' words, let us now turn to God in prayer. Please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, we commit Sue Gray into your eternal care. Hold her in your loving arms. Care for her family, friends, and all who mourn her loss. Be with us. Pour your love into our lives and care for us now and always. In Jesus' name, let God's children say, Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 790, Day by Day. Please rise.
Turning again in our bulletins on the second page at the top. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. I will end each petition with, Lord, in your mercy. Please respond by saying, hear our prayer. Jesus, fullness of compassion, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Sue, and dry the tears of those who weep. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, man of sorrows, you wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, firstborn of the new creation, you raise the dead. Give to our sister life eternal. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, friend of sinners, you promised paradise to the repentant thief on the cross. Bring Sue to the joys of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, wellspring of life, you washed our sister in baptism and anointed her with the Holy Spirit. Give her communion with all your saints. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, bread of life, you nourish Sue at your table on earth. Welcome her at your table in the realm of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, the bright morning star, comfort us in our sorrows at Sue's death. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord, in your mercy. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection, open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation, please be seated as we sing hymn number 732, Born in Cry.
now join with our hearts together. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we command your servant Sue. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. A word um, before we sing our sending hymn. Thank you very much for your prayers and your presence here today. Thank you for being a part of Sue's life. When we process out, you're going to hang a left and head down to the dining hall uh, where the family invites you to share in some hors d'oeuvres and snacks and conversation and time of fellowship. So if you would please rise. We're going to sing hymn number 536, God Be With You Till We Meet Again. (laughs) 